Well, the days and weeks following the earthquake, Alaskans reflected on what had worked or what had failed, and what has changed since that last big quake, and what still needs to change. In a city as large as Anchorage, in a state that has an earthquake every 15 minutes. When the big ones happen, we all remember. The cracks, the swaying, the cleaning, and the fear of aftershocks. No one wants to experience it again. But did we make any changes to improve safety? Are we in a better place now than we were then? I don't think so, because nothing has really changed in those five years. It has been five years since the 7.1 earthquake. The repairs were made, but as far as improving building codes or inspections... So we were not any safer today than we were five years ago? No lessons were learned? If they have been, it's not by changes of code. It's maybe changes of practice of the people. But in one very important way, the Port of Alaska says the quake backed up what it has said all along. There was a lot of concerns about how the corroded wharf piles would respond, uh, and they did exactly what everybody was afraid they were going to do. Uh, not enough to bring the facility out of service, but enough to get our attention for certain that uh, if we didn't think we had evidence that we needed to do a modernization program, which is really replace all the docks, that was certainly validated by that. The Port of Alaska director says there were no seismic standards on the docks when they were originally constructed. And that kind of situation would not be permitted today. That's led to an expansive modernization program for a place that handles 3.9 million tons of fuel and cargo in 2018. We are still talking about it somewhere in the neighborhood of 1.8 to $2 billion. We're not far enough along in the design work to have a, any more of a degree of certainty than just that at this stage of the game. Engineers also say that as new buildings are constructed in Anchorage, building owners now proactively look to improve safety. We have owners coming in and asking us not only to design new buildings, but what we're seeing is people asking us to upgrade their existing buildings. Previous codes were not as strict. We didn't know as much about engineering. We didn't know as much about earthquakes, say, 50 years ago. And it's not required for owners to upgrade to make their building more resilient, but they are wanting to. So what we're seeing is more voluntary upgrades of existing buildings. That's the positive side, but remember, upgrades are not required. But what concerns me or keeps me up at night, if you will, is the older buildings that were designed under previous codes, which means they were designed for le likely less load and their detailing is different, which means how exactly the structural members are put together. We just didn't know as much as a, as a community 50 years ago, 40 years ago even. So that, that's what concerns me the most. What keeps the port director up at night? worrying about what might happen if an even larger or longer quake occurs before repairs. I couldn't tell you what would be left here when it was over. I mean, we're, we're that close. So yeah, having to wait till 2028 or so before we have another new cargo dock that has the same structural integrity as the new petroleum cement terminal, yeah, that gives you pause. The Anchorage School District is another group making upgrades. That one actually fell and hit the locker. That need became clear after the quake when there were huge problems like this. Yeah. ASD says since the quake, it's assessing all of its 92 buildings, which include more than 4,000 classroom spaces. And so they're a client that has said, you know, we don't have to upgrade our buildings, but we have buildings from the 60s, 70s, 80s, mm -hmm. and we know we can do better, you know, frankly, for the kids and the, the people in the building. Yeah. So they've chosen to do it. But is it a choice others can afford to make one day? We may find out.